So, uh, you know, at Tesla, we don't make slow cars. Uh, we don't make this, so this thing has crazy power relative to a, a diesel truck. Uh, I mean, actually, especially if you if you don't have, if you're not towing anything, you could zip around like it looks crazy. Basically, it looks like a elephant moving like a cheetah. It didn't look right, frankly. Um, but it's uh, it, it's this is this is not sluggish in the least. It's it's fast. Uh, it's fast to accelerate. It's it's uh, fast to brake. It's really a step change improvement in uh, what it's like to drive a semi truck. Um, yeah, when we've got three yeah. times the power. Three times the power than any diesel truck on the road right now. So you've got all the work, all the power you need to get the job done. But the other reason that it's a beast is because it's also efficient. And you, know, you can go 500 miles on a single charge on one of these things. So it's the mix of those two that this is why this is a game changer. And what's awesome is both of those are enabled by our new 1,000 volt powertrain, which is the first vehicle that we're doing with that. And don't worry, there'll be some more things, more vehicles coming with that. But uh, this is going to be... Uh, a game changer because of all the awesome innovations that have happened, you know, behind the scenes and you know, under the hood, so to speak. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So we're obviously leveraging leveraging a ton of stuff that we've already done. So we've got uh, well, it's not probably 51 billion miles driven. I don't know. It's more every every day. Um, so we're using our existing drive units, power electronics, uh, infotainment, uh, the, our super efficient uh, heat pump, uh, HVAC system, uh, and uh, state-of-the-art inverters. So we're able to leverage uh, the existing uh, powertrain and uh, elements that are already made at volume uh, in order to uh, achieve ex extreme efficiency of, of cost and ca uh, capability. So. Yeah, and it also means we get to leverage all the reliability that the active car fleet is doing. So we're accumulating all these miles, getting a ton of demonstrated learnings into the field, and we're going to go and put all these trucks into to the world and get a lot of learnings as well, but we're coming off of a great launching pad with everything that's done in the rest of our products already. And it's also enabled because you know, Tesla's got this full vertical integration on the software and the hardware side. So the teams that are working together to put all that together into one package, this is a huge win you know, for all of our products, but particularly Semi. Uh, lots of hardcore testing. So, I mean, one of the things about a, a commercial truck is that the reliability has to be extremely high. So it's got to, got to be running continuously, can't break down. Uh, it's got to handle every kind of weather. Uh, uptime is, is super important for any kind of semi-truck. So we've, we've tested durability in every kind of weather, every kind of environment. Um, I mean, you could, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, so even just, we've driven Donner, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but we've been through hot, cold, snow, rain. We've been putting this thing through all its paces in the lab as well as in the real world. You know, the simulation team has been doing an incredible job of being able to scale all of that you know, in the uh, virtual side. And the other thing is that we're going to take these and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And we're going to put these on into our own fleet, into our own supply chain. And we're going to use this to transport goods between our factories and our suppliers because we believe in it, not just from a mission perspective and a cost perspective, but because we want to close that feedback loop. We've got to get that learning as fast as we can. We want it straight from the drivers. We want it straight from the service techs that are working on it. We're going to take all that data that's coming in and continue to refine the product and make it better, just like we do on the car side. Yeah, exactly. So to be clear, like th these semi trucks are, are running 24/7 between our, uh, Sparks, uh, technically in Sparks, not Reno, but uh, most people will think of it as Reno, Reno, Reno Sparks, uh, and, and Tahoe. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is technically the uh, called the Tahoe Reno Industrial Complex or Trick. Um, now, there's an in interesting backstory about uh, why it's called that. Very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, it's, it's, it, the, the, Tesla using the trucks continuously day and night uh, between um, here and Fremont and, and back again uh, is, is going to be uh, it is an, a great test of the vehicle uh, and will give us a great feedback loop for continuing to improve the product. So my click is sort of not working. There we go. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, we've got a tri-motor yeah. uh, powertrain system. So and they're we're using the uh, carbon overwrap sleeve. So essentially, we're using the the, the, the plaid uh, Model S Model X uh, powertrain uh, 
and um, but it, we're, we're and, and, and actually enabling the two of the drive units to actually disconnect uh, yeah. so that they're not uh, free spinning. Uh, yeah. So the efficiency is actually much greater in cruise. Yeah, this is really unique. I mean, we're going with a tri-motor system. One of them is constantly engaged, so that's for maximum efficiency. You're getting on a highway, that's doing the bulk of the work, and it's operating at the peak efficiency point of the entire drivetrain. And then the other two units are for torque and acceleration. So when the driver needs it to get their job done, whether that's you know, getting out of a loading dock or it's on the road they need to pass somebody, you're tackling a grade, you have the torque and power to do it. And the cool thing is that these are clutched automatically, so no driver input needed, but it's also seamless. So the highway efficiency unit is cruising along, doing its thing, and if the driver puts their foot to the floor, the torque unit spin up, clutch engages, and takes over, and it does all of that before we've maxed out the torque on the efficiency unit, so it's completely smooth. There's no turbo lag or jerkiness or anything like that. No driver input needed. It's smooth, both in terms of acceleration and deceleration for regen. It's uh, really cool happening all behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, what I find actually really wild about this is that uh, you can have a, a truck um, which is 82,000 pounds, and uh, by the way, the re reason we can actually do 82,000 pounds is that there's a 2,000 pound extra uh, that's allowed by law for electric trucks. So you get a little bit of an uh, advantage on the, uh, on the, on the weight side. Um, but you can, you can basically pull 82,000 uh, pounds uh, on, at cruise using, to, and the only thing that's doing that is a tiny little motor so on one axle. Oh, that big, well, football size, maybe? Yeah, yeah you can yeah. carry it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like a, you know, I mean, you, you can check it in your luggage. Good luck that, doing that with a diesel engine. And one of those is more powerful than a diesel. Yeah. Yeah, just that, just that one little guy is, is more powerful than a regular diesel engine on, on a, on a semi-truck. Um, but it's just, I find it, like, amazing that this enormous thing can be pulled by something that you could carry in your hands. It's like, wow, that's power density. Yep. Yeah. So. So yeah, and then in terms of, you know, we're putting this to use in the real world. Yeah. So that, that truck's clocking it at 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds. And when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice, you'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. This is, yeah, this is where it comes in. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, not, it's like driving a, a normal car, not like driving a truck. Um, you, it's just that you're, you're moving 82,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, a, a, any highway grade you come across, you can tackle at speed. Yeah. You know, there's no compromise. No slowdown. Nope. And the other beauty is that you've got all this power going up, but you also have it going down. And what that means is you've got regenerative braking. So rather than using a jake brake or engine braking like a diesel truck does, where you have to worry about hitting your shifts. If you miss a gear, you're onto your brakes and potentially in a runaway situation. You don't have to worry about any of that. There's no shifting, no nothing. And so the regen recaptures all that energy as you're going down these grades. But on top of it, it also is a safer system for not just the driver, but everybody on the road because there's no gear to miss. Yeah. I mean, just it's worth reemphasizing that point. Um, because it's an electric uh, drivetrain, when it goes downhill, you actually, or when you slow down, it recaptures um, the energy of motion or the energy of, 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 of height. The, the potential and kinetic energy are largely recaptured, uh, whereas for a diesel truck, that's not possible. You can't just, you know, create diesel. So it, it, you just end up heating brakes. And, and then your brakes overheat, and you can't use them, and then it, it's actually quite, it's pretty dangerous because the brakes stop working. Yeah, that's why you have runaway truck ramps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's funny because, so if for any of you that have ever driven I-80 and driven Donner, there's a mandatory brake check stop for trucks down by Emigrant Gap. We've done this, and it's really funny because we'll go over the grade, we'll come down, and we just kind of pull to the side and we're like, well, there's nothing to check. We've never used the things, and we just keep driving. Yeah. Yeah. And we get to the bottom of the hill, we have cold brakes. Yeah. <laughs> That's like mind-blowing in, in the trucking world. So it's like it's insane, basically. Uh, and, and you, yeah, so... So it's, it's really worth emphasizing that that's a significant safety improvement for the truck driver and for other people on the road. Um, and and the, we, we also have um, excellent traction control because the precision of an electric motor is vastly better than a, a diesel engine. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of got like the, I'm trying to think of the right analogy here, but like it's got the precision of like a, 
laser printer. <laughs> it's not great. It's, it's like really precise. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, so, and and the, the reaction is, uh, uh, so it's like you don't have to worry about, uh, tra tra like traction control is awesome. It's got, uh, it's automatically stopping the, the, the truck from jackknifing. It's doing all this safety stuff uh, in the background that just isn't possible with uh, regular diesel trucks. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a step change in technology in, 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 in so many ways. Um, yeah, and the tight integration with the software team that we have here really makes that happen because it means that we can take all that uh, the precision and actually put it to use. You know, it's not some tie-in of some third-party powertrain. No, this is all in-house. And so we do this really neat, uh, you know, chassis control work at the brake level, the traction control level. We integrate with our uh, total stability control system and make sure that the driver, you know, has a lot of confidence but also has everything they need to stay on the road. It's going to be, a, it's a really nice, t uh, neat, integrated uh, package overall in terms of, you know, software and control. And it's totally seamless to the driver and it'll be a, a game changer in terms of safety. Yeah. So we talk power. You want to talk efficiency? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you know, some people out there say it can't be done. Um, I don't know who might say that, but uh, <laughs> I've heard rumors. Um, and uh, so we, we just did it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we're going to post the whole video, unedited, on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no jump cuts. <laughs> yeah. And th this wasn't, you know, some ultra clean, precise test track simulation or something where we, you know, shut down a road. Nope. This is real world. You know, this is over grapevine. This is with traffic. This is true 500 miles. You know, we were loaded just under 82k. You know, we didn't. No special aero treatments. Yeah. Truck came off the line, shook it down, made it run. That's it. Yeah, there was like no fast moves here. Nope. So, to be clear, it's not like, oh, what, what, did, what tricks did they pull? Were there actually a whole bunch of tricks we could have pulled yeah. and didn't? <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, you know, like, as Dan said, like no, no special aero treatment. Uh, the, oh, and by the way, we should mention there was yeah. no charging. Like, we, we charged yeah, the yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah, we didn't stop the charge. Single, yes. single driver. One charge. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> minor detail. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's not like 500 miles, like, with no load, with special arrow and special everything. It's, like, fully loaded go, going from the Bay Area. We actually have to, like, go a bit north to get to, you know, actually add to get to 500 miles because, you, you know, uh, L.A. to the Bay Area is less than that. Well, we went all the way to San Diego here. So we, we, oh, okay, we, we stretched yeah. out on the southern end. And, uh, I mean, do you want to see on the video? I mean, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we have the proof. Absolutely. So... It's only eight hours long, so... Yeah, buckle in. <laughs> Don't worry, we brought lots of snacks. Yeah. But yeah. Standard trip. Down the five, up grapevine, through LA, traffic, construction. You know, we got the bypass on the way station, but, you know, running full 80, or just under 82, full deliveries. Nothing to hide. Yeah, real, real world, real, real, it's, yeah. He, he did take one restroom break for, there, there is a required mandatory 30 minute break within the first eight hours of operation. Okay. Took a small restroom break, but that was it. Yep. All right. Cool. So aerodynamic efficiency obviously matters a lot. And you can see it's, it's uh, shaped like a bullet. It's really aerodynamic. Um, and uh, that, that helps a lot. Uh, so we get uh, less than two kilowatt uh, hours. Two per kilowatt mile. hours a mile. Yep. So. And, and that's the name of the game yeah. is efficiency there. Yep. Yep. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's really efficient uh, in every way. And. Uh, I mean, the team's done a lot of awesome work. I mean, we, yes. we went into the wind tunnel um, with this really cool model, rolling road, the whole nine yards and pulled in a lot of learnings and all of our features from the car side that you know, give us such great real world efficiency there. And really want to make sure that the, you know, the truck and the trailer have to work together. You know, this is a combination. This is not just the truck. If you optimize one, you actually might disrupt the whole combination. And so we spent a lot of time both you know, virtually, but also in the wind tunnel to make this happen. And really some next level engineering to uh, of everything they had to do there. And you know, it means that we've got a really efficient truck. Yeah. So.